the Calgary Police Service Economic Crimes Unit has charged three people in relation to a multi-million dollar fraud investigation. Between December of 2014 and May of 2015, the Economic Crimes Unit investigated a complaint of an elderly victim being defrauded of more than $8 million. The primary suspect allegedly utilized false charities as a front to convince the victim to invest large quantities of funds. The money was promised to be guaranteed through various international means and have a high rate of return on investment. As the fraud advanced, the suspect had, paid, had the victim pay large sums of money in order to have funds released from holdings. It is believed that the culprit used the following charities to support his ongoing criminal activity. Humanitarian Foundation of Canada, World Job and Food Bank, Canadian Organization for International Development, Strategies Foundation, Le Lepredotra Inc, Antenna Inc, Calgary Community Outreach Services Society. The charities associated to the suspect were all determined to be fraudulent and are not registered with the Canada Revenue Agency. The money donated by this victim is believed to have been funneled through these charities to international accounts. As a result of the initial investigation, search warrants were executed on Wednesday, May 27, 2015 at two residents and one business in the southwest Calgary. A significant amount of property and evidence was seized during the search warrants, including what you see before you, along with a set of safe deposit box keys. As a result of finding the keys, an additional search warrant was executed early today, Thursday, May 28th. The boxes were found to contain silver, jewels, coins, and various types of currencies. Following the execution of the original search warrants, two people were charged and one remains outstanding on warrants. A fourth person was arrested and released at the time um, after the search warrants. Her involvement with the matter is still under investigation. Joseph Edison, also known as Joseph Edison Fernando, 36 or 66, of Calgary, has been charged with fraud over 5,000, theft over 5,000, and forgery. Stephanie Haas Fernando, 37, of Calgary, has been charged with fraud over 5,000 and theft over 5,000. And warrants have also been issued for Anshul Edison Fernando, 39, of Calgary, for fraud over 5,000 and theft over 5,000. The investigation continues and further charges will likely be laid. Anyone who thinks they may have been solicited for funds related to high, in, high yield investments is encouraged to contact the Calgary Police Service non-emergency number at 403-266-1234. Anyone who may have other information about this investigation is asked to contact the non-emergency number or Crime Stoppers anonymously. The Calgary Community Outreach Services Society lists the Calgary Police Service as one of its supporters. This is not a registered charity and the Calgary Police Service has not had any formal involvement with this group or representatives for a number of years. As part of the ongoing criminal investigation, any involvement between this group, its organizers and the service is now under review. The Calgary Police Service would like to thank the following organizations for their assistance in this investigation. United States Secret Service, Canada Border Service Agency, Homeland Security, RCMP, Alberta Securities Commission, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the CRA Enforcement Branch. The service would also like to thank our partners in the banking industry, in including BMO, TD, Scotiabank, and ATB. In addition, a number of CPS units were instrumental to the success of this uh, and resolution, including the District 2 Operations Team and the Criminal Intelligence Unit. I'll now take your questions. Why was US Homeland Security and the Security This is a very large and complex investigation. And at the onset of the investigation, while well, we thought the jurisdiction was in Canada, soon revealed uh, that there were ties uh, to the US and other countries internationally. Can you just give a comment on the scope of this investigation? 
Yeah, you know what, I'm going to liken it to Pandora's box. It really is. Uh, we came in with a very small scope, one victim with $8 million. And from what uh, our investigation has revealed right now, I can tell you the search warrant yesterday seized three uh, cube vans full of documents and evidence uh, supporting fraudulent activity. So ongoing. Ongoing, definitely ongoing and international. And can you speak to the relationship between the accused? The accused um, that have been charged are f um, a male uh, father and the female daughter-in-law. The outstanding individual on warrants would be the son of the uh, initial male charged. Have you ever seen anything like you know what, I think um, from what we've seen with this investigation and how the layers have uncovered, I would say it's probably one of the largest investigations that we will have seen uh, and we will be sharing that information and intelligence across the world. Just on the scope of this world, it must speak to the sophistication as well as the size of the problem. Yeah, you know what, uh, fraud is a very interesting um, crime overall. Um, the perpetrators of it uh, are very smart individuals, connected individuals. Something of this scope um, would suggest connections across the world, like I said, globally, um, and not just one scheme. So we're, we're really talking about that one investment scheme right now uh, that initi initiated this investigation. But what we are uncovering is that there are multiple fraud schemes that uh, the, these um, offenders are perpetrating. Do they target uh, seniors? In this instance, uh, I will liken this to a grandparent scam. What happened was the offender reached out and was introduced to the elderly victim and really established, established a strong friendship for several years. From there, um, that relationship was used and the trust built in that relationship was used to convince uh, that high yield investment. An initial return, a very small amount in relation to the initial investment was received, which would be the hook that these fraudsters use. I did get something back from this. From there, um, throughout 15 years of a relationship, um, this victim continued to give funds on a very regular basis um, up to the eight million dollars and, and maybe even more. Have you had an opportunity to interact with the victim here? Can you speak to how they're feeling? You know what, I haven't personally interacted with the victim but my uh, primary investigator has. Uh, I think initially it's a feeling of uh, disbel disbelief that a friend could do this uh, and that the friend didn't do this. Um, throughout our investigation we have had the opportunity to be in close contact with the family and I can tell you yesterday when we phoned the victim's son, uh, he was ecstatic. He was driving at the time and sitting down and he actually said, I am glad I'm sitting down but probably not good that I'm driving right now and uh, that his family is very grateful for the work that's been done on this file. Do the accused have um, any history either with police or with the Securities Commission? I can't tell you that, but you can definitely look that up. Is this the single largest amount of money taken from you know, defrauded from your private individuals? You know what, I haven't done any research into that. It is a very significant amount though. And this is only one victim, so uh, what I will say around that is that it is our hope that if there are other victims out there um, that believe they uh, have been defrauded by these individuals, uh, to please contact us uh, at the Calgary Police Service and again at the 266-1234 uh, number. Sorry, can somebody repeat? I was just wondering, is it tied to uh, an international crime organization? Again, the complexity of this investigation leads us to believe that these four um, individuals cannot be acting on their own. They're very connected uh, across the globe. Uh, at this time, I can't say whether it's organized crime per se or not, but definitely uh, a larger scale than just four individuals. What we can tell uh, or what's been uncovered to date is that uh, the United States, a uh, lot of European countries, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Nigeria, and many other um, countries across the globe. How long have they been doing this for? 
Well, this one victim was uh, a victim over 15 years. The individuals uh, associated to this, the offenders, we believe have been in Canada since the early uh, 1980s. Uh, nothing uncovered to date suggests any legitimate business purpose uh, from that length of time. For our writing purposes, and I apologize if this is in the release, can you say if it's a male or female victim? Uh, elderly male victim.